so how many people cried? Um, my name is Rachel Below. My handsome husband just went behind me. Um, if you guys don't know us, we have the pleasure of serving here with the Fullerses. Kristen just preached today. This is a special time in our service where we share stories um, from members of our church to inspire to, um, yeah, just to get closer and, and know each other and know our stories more. So this is called Tribe Stories. And this is Moses and Kelsey. Most of you probably already know them. Um, what we're going to share today ties in beautifully with Kristen's sermon on joy and choosing joy and defiance. Um, I think as, as Christians, as followers of Christ, we have our moments, right, of conversion where I think Christian alluded to earlier, there's a, a BC and an AD, right? There's a before and an after, and there is a drastic change, and we've come to Christ, and he's redeemed us from so many things. Then, in our walk, we can sometimes feel like we lose that joy, or we can feel like, is, is that it? Is that the end? Is that one transformation it? And we can, um, that can lead us down a lot of dark paths, right, of feeling like, why am I not joyful too? Or what is wrong with me? Um, so Moses is actually going to share something very personal and vulnerable today about his journey with kind of colliding with that in his life. Uh, I, I did want to mention uh, my, my impetus for wanting to, to share about this was a while back when uh, we had the congregational service and it was about finding moments of awe. Uh, and, and I think... It, it ties in with the, with the um, message today fantastically um, about choosing joy and about that that message of uh, it's easy for you to say um, and choosing joy. A lot of times for for a lot of us that like deliberately finding a sense of awe or choosing joy uh, or saying that's easy for you to say, these things, it, they can be foreign to us. It makes it makes so much sense to think, oh, I should just choose to be joyful. And that is absolutely true. You should. But it seems so unattainable. Uh, it seems like it's beyond a, a glass prism. Like you, you see it, it should be there, but you're, you don't experience it. It's like saying um, to, to somebody, that person is sitting over there clear as day and I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Um, but I... My my experience from from my youth when I was in school uh, up through through high school and through through college was a constant sense of uh, I'm not good enough. I, I was diagnosed with ADHD a couple years ago. Um, there's a, a Instagrammer that recently said I have ADHD. I have attention deficit hyperactivity. I'm t completely normal, um, but I'll say ADHD just to be clear. Uh, I was diagnosed a couple years ago. And in hindsight, I realized how much it affected so much of my life. Um, and as those weaknesses came, as not being able to keep up in certain areas of school, uh, as not being able to keep up in the jobs that I would get later, uh, and constantly being late to everything, there was this constant message of, you're not good enough. Um, and as uh, when I became a Christian, uh, I definitely felt the the joy of being being forgiven of my sins, and I was immensely grateful for that. Um, but as those reinforcements kept coming in my life, uh, rejections, uh, a, uh, an unsuccessful marriage, uh, there was abuse in that marriage. Uh, it was abuse. I was a rec uh, recipient of abuse in that marriage. Um, and then subsequent um, rejections and ongoing reinforcements of that, I, I, I did develop that belief that I'm not good enough. And this is all so subconscious. You can tell yourself all, all you want, you know, th this is fine, I am good enough. Um, you can try to force yourself to believe it, but it often isn't your experience. Um, so fast forward to the, the, the present. Um, I lost my job about a year and a half due to uh, uh, COVID and the decline of business and everything. Uh, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, I dealt with some mental health issues that, that summer. 
uh, but I decided I was going to go and, and take a, a, a web development boot camp. I was super excited at the, at the beginning. Uh, it was lasted a few. It lasted a few months, but about halfway through, I uh, started feeling that excitement wear off. Uh, typical ADH, um, and I was was nervous about it, but I decided to continue, and I finished it, uh, and I was super proud of myself. But I I crashed. I had no motivation to do anything else, and I was like, okay, I I just finished this. It was incredibly hard. Um, you know, I'll give myself a break, but that turned into a few weeks and then a few months. And so I, I really wrestled with my, I really rushed, wrestled with a lot of depression at that time and trying to figure out why am I feeling this way. Uh, I, I had been praying to God all these years and I, I felt like I hadn't, I had lost a connection to God. I felt like no matter how much I prayed, I felt like he wasn't there, but I really just went after praying. I, I, that I wanted some relief from this. I wanted, um, it didn't make sense that God wouldn't answer that prayer because I wanted to live my best life for him and I wanted to devote my life and my mind to him. Um, I follow uh, Kelsey on, on Instagram. She has a, a great coaching business, but she had uh, just uh, completed a, a training uh, and was offering uh, a um, session, session is the word I'm thinking, uh, was offering a session on imposter syndrome. And I was like, okay, well, that would probably help me. I haven't been applying to a, a lot of jobs because I was scared of, you know, not being good enough. And, and um, surely when I got a job, I would feel the same way, especially a programming job, probably be in over my head. Uh, so I signed up for that. And when I, when I took that, not when I took that, uh, when I went through that with her, I realized that that feeling of I'm not good enough was so pervasive. It had roots in so many uh, areas of my life. Um, and, and again, this is something that you, you can be conscious of to a, an extent, um, but it has roots. It's, it's like, you know, so pulling up, more. yeah, it, it's like pulling up roots in a, and a, and a yard, you know, you, if you've ever done that, you see how hard it is for some of those. They, the roots go really deep and they're really strong. Um, and so it affected, uh, when I came out of this, it was, and it was really a short, uh, like hour and a half, I realized that my lack of being able to connect with God was due to that feeling of I'm not good enough. Um, I felt like he wasn't listening. I felt like there was something wrong. I wasn't performing. Uh, I regained that connection with God. I felt like I wanted to pray, pray to him. I felt like I wanted to praise him. Uh, I was, it was a joy to get on my knees every morning. It was a joy to actually have a quiet time and actually be able to read. I was actually being able to, to focus to so much of a greater extent um, because there, was, there wasn't this thought of, oh, you're not going to be able to focus anyway because you're not good enough. Um, your brain reinforces that. Uh, there was, I was able to connect with people better, be able to listen to people, uh, to be able to regard them as present, to be in the moment, to, to be able to um, listen attentively. Uh, there, my, my anger, I would freely, frequently get really angry with myself for forgetting things or for messing up. Um, and that anger was gone. I remember the first time I, I reacted in anger because it's a habitual thought. And then this realization, like, what was that? It was so, it didn't make sense to me anymore to, to get that angry. Uh, and it was, it was gone. Um, the fear of, I dealt with a lot of anxiety too over the years. Uh, and it had gotten worse and worse. And a lot of my anxiety was based around my health. And... Um, fear of getting sick if, if something happened, you know, I was constantly worried, oh gosh, what, what was wrong? Am I going to, um, it, it would get to the feeling of if I would really be really worried about it. And now it's, it's amazing. It, it was just the, the, the feeling might come and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, like I should, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um, and I'll, you know, if I die, I die. <laughs> there was a beautiful like disconnect, like, uh, like I trust God now because I don't have to worry about being not being good enough. Um, and so, yeah, it was a really transformative experience. 
that's thank you so much for sharing that I mean and it sounds like a long journey right with lots of ups and downs and ins and outs and I'm sure I'm sure you guys can all relate to some, if not all, of what Moses shared, because um, we are deep waters, right, as people. We have so many things deep down inside of us. Um, so now I'm really curious to hear what it is you helped him with. Dare say what witchcraft you did. Bewitched him. No, I'm teasing. But, you know, how, how did you help him? What was the method? Um, explain to us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, uh, this has been so fascinating to me, too, because I, I experienced a change so similar and profound like Moses when this kind of help found me too. Actually, I have to give Kirsten credit. Uh, she's probably over there frothing at the mouth like, I'm the one that's the master at all of this. Why are these two peasants talking? But Just kidding, she's awesome. But um, so um, a little bit about neuro-linguistic programming and how it works is that it's really sensory and language-based techniques to um, create really profound and rapid change on the subconscious level. Because, at, I mean, there's so many interesting statistics out there. Like, maybe some of y'all have heard that over 90% of your decisions are made on the subconscious level. And a little bit about what you were saying that I resonated with so much. And I know that all of us love to appropriately quote things like take thoughts captive choose joy yes yes and yes but how exhausting is that when and after a while has anyone felt like a loser like why are these thoughts just continuing to hound me all the time and I cannot defeat them and it turns out with a little bit about the subconscious mind um, we're often when we're talking about taking thoughts captive. We're talking about thoughts that trigger an emotion that lead to an action that therefore determine your behaviors and results. But where did that thought come from? <laughs> so many more layers above that, which is your sense of your core values, which a lot of people think that those are conscious, but many of those are actually subconscious values that you don't have words to. Uh, that are from your sponge years uh, as a kid and your uh, sense of your beliefs about the world, about yourself, about God, about the powers that be, about what's possible for you. And that all is uh, at the top is your sense of identity. And all of that is largely a subconscious process that therefore is determining and feeding the thoughts that you're wrestling against, likely on a daily, momentary basis. And so when we use these sensory and language-based techniques that are uh, designed to create a rapid change, because the thing is, you don't, <laughs> when it's a subconscious change, there's not a wrestling with it, it's a recoding, and then it's done. It's done, we met one time. We met one time. <laughs> and, um, and so then you see this surprising day to day of like, whoa, wait, did I, just, did I just do that thing and felt no negative dread, terror, self-consciousness about it? Um, it like, this ease gets to come into your life uh, because and just to give one more brief example, have you ever noticed somebody that you think, wow, they're so secure, they're so confident. And if you try to say something against them or attack their character in some way, do you notice it would just kind of slide off their back because, <laughs> because of their sense of identity and beliefs that are locked in, that makes no sense about them. So they're like, that just doesn't make any sense about me. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, that's a little bit about what happens now after this work is done. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, I want to learn more about that. I'm sure other people do too. I think what's so fascinating is as I'm listening to you speak, I keep thinking about how incredible God is in creating our minds yeah. and how he gave us his word and his commands and his teaching to take thoughts captive, right? Mm -hmm. To think 
about joy, to repent in the way that we in the way that we see our perspective, to have a kingdom perspective, um, to transform by the renewing of our minds, right? But he kind of left us to be in a community and do that together. And that's what's so powerful about this story is you've been wrestling with this stuff. Um, and you got to a point where you're like, I need help. I need to share. I need to be open. <laughs> I need to take chances. I need to do something. And one of the greatest gifts that we have is this community. I mean, there's so many resources, right? So many resources of people who have walked before you, walked the same path. Um, when Christian was talking about, at the end of his lesson, the practicals, right? Sometimes we, we listen to sermons and we think that's amazing, that's inspiring, I love it. But who's going to walk me through that? Who's going to hold my hand and actually show me how to do it, Right? Sometimes we can just see the end result. We'll be joyful. We'll renew your mind. Awesome. The Bible says that. How do I do it? Right? And we've got so much in this kingdom. So, I mean, talented people that can offer services, that can offer help, so that we can live out the scriptures, not just read them. And, like, I've done that where I've read them and I just kind of want to, why isn't it working? Like, that's what it says. Like, yeah. why am I not Depressed? transforming? Stop like, it. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, knock it off. It said stop. But we need the community. We need to be known. We need people to help us. So thank you so much for being that example. And please seek out Moses and Kelsey and Kristen. And, and I'm sure, like, if you let yourself be known and share your story in this community, you're going to find so much help, so many resources. Um, there's no reason to read the scriptures and feel like, well, not for me. You know, that's good for you, but not for me. Like, what a shame, what a waste, right? To read, rejoice, be joyful, and just accept that that's not for you. Like, please don't let, let that happen. So thank you guys so much for sharing.